Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Dance Portugal here, and today I'm going to be doing a new ant care species guide on a very interesting and very easy to keep and also European species. Uh, this is, of course, um, Myrmica rubra. Now, as you know, we've got to get Jeff here. So, Jeff, how's it said? Myrmica rubra. Yeah, that's the one. That's all right. Thanks, Jeff. So, Myrmica rubra, as some of you may know, is a species of ant that is red, as the name indicates, and they are stinging ants. They're called the, the European fire ant because they have a similar behavior to the infamous imported or Asian fire ants, Solenopsis geminata and Solenopsis invicta. Now, uh, Myrmica rubra is a lot easier to keep and a lot more tamed than um, Solenopsis. They are native to all parts of Europe and they extend east through Asia as far as Kazakhstan. They have also been introduced to parts of North America, especially the USA, and uh, they're, they're exotic there. But here they're fairly common and fairly interesting ants when it comes to the European standard. So first of all, they have a very interesting red, reddish reddish brown to red coloration and um and they can they can sting of course but their their venom is not very potent it's like being st stung by a by a stinging needle you know those plants and um it doesn't leave much of a mark also they can be polygynous and they can have very big colonies so they're very they're very interesting to keep now, one thing to keep in mind when it comes to, to colony size is that they get very easily conditioned when, when it comes to colony size. In the wild, it's very difficult to find a fully grown colony that's very big because they are not very nomadic and they do not, they do not choose places to live based on how much they can grow there because they they have very a very big preference for high humidity so they they'll take they'll take more preference in choosing a place where humidity is better for them and uh, sometimes that will crowd them up and will make so that they won't be able to grow to huge numbers now if you treat them properly or if you find a colony in the wild that that is by chance in a very good place to be they can grow to be about at uh, about 20,000 workers strong and that is great also uh, 20,000 can be achieved with only one queen but uh, the growth will be faster with more than one and they are polygynous now their polygynousy i guess uh, you could say that is fairly strange as in the queens don't get along along very well they'll fight a lot for who is the dominant queen ant and uh, in, in big colonies, you don't get the squirmishes very often because they can be kept apart by the workers. But when the colony is small, they fight a lot and sometimes they kill each other and um, stuff happens, you know. But if, if all goes well, you have a big colony developing really fast because of multiple queens. And the workers of a big colony of Myrmica rubra are ferocious. They have some of the best behavior I have ever found in an European species because they're super aggressive super aggressive towards prey items but they, but they are also explorative in nature and curious in nature to the point where sometimes if you don't alarm them too much before you do this if you pick one up or you let one crawl in onto your finger she'll just run along your arm just exploring what's what, what's going on instead of just like most aggressive species just going in to bite you and sting you now these ants, um, they're not really big, but they're not very small like Solenopsis fugax or something like that. They can be, I'd say, they're, they're about four to five millimeters long and maybe six, I don't know. The queens are fairly the same size as the workers. They can be a little bit larger. I'd say they, they can go to be about eight millimeters or something, but... The big thing to distinguish worker from queen is that one, the queens are more brown than the workers. The workers are always more light reddish colored, more a more vivid red, and um, the queens are also much bulkier 
in the thorax and in the abdomen, even though in the head they tend to be just the same as the worker or maybe a little bit smaller. Now, when it comes to humidity and temperature, as always, I'll throw some numbers at you, but um, keep in mind, you should give them a gradient, especially in temperature, but in humidity, you should try to keep it basically as high as possible without overcrowding the nest with humid air and condensation, uh, basically everywhere. So don't, don't, don't give them a, a dry side as they, they don't really utilize it. They prefer very moist places. Now, I'd say humidity, never keep them below 50, except in the outward. The outward can be almost as dry as you want. Of course, in a, in a healthy, dry, a healthy dry. The inside the nest, I would go up to about 80%, but not higher than that. And I would stick to 70 if I if I were you. Now, temperature they can they can handle, um, can handle as low as fifteen, and they can handle as high as as thirty. But the the thriving threshold would be somewhere from eighteen to twenty eight, and in the nest you should keep them in a um, in a threshold of about twenty to twenty five, and that will be great. They can handle. Uh, warmer and when they they are a big colony warmer is better because they'll be they'll be able to develop fast as long as they have enough food warmer is always better and and humidity of course now they do hibernate from october to march and they do that f at a temperature that is just above five uh, five celsius now when hibernating I'll try to I would try to keep them very steady as they are known to wake up early if the temperatures just, just rise a bit. Uh, and personally I would not hibernate these ants as they don't really have a very developed biological clock, I find. And um they don't really need the hibernation pro process to achieve anything at all. They can just keep growing through the winter. Now one thing I'll say is that this species has that that very very active and aggressive behavior and um when you have this species what you'll have what you'll end up with is a nest that is first of all very easy to see through if you have a glass because they're mainly insect eaters we'll get into diet in just a bit and um they'll have a very very tanked out and compact nest where they use it and very 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 withered of ants where they they're not using it so you have this big difference between wh what they're using and what they're not and that's very cool to see also it's very hard to find the queens due to these due to this condensation of ants where they want to to you to utilize the nest and you have an outworld where they'll be always ready to attack and call more workers in to attack whatever you put in so they don't really take to a lot of a lot of sugary stuff. They mainly eat insects. They're very carnivorous and they, they love their, their feeder insects. The more juicy they are, the better. And uh, they can they are a species that can take down and cut open things like mealworms. So when you have a big colony, you can throw in a an entire mealworm and they'll be able to deal with it. They also eat, of course, they do eat some sugary stuff. They need hydro, uh, hydrocarbonates. Hi hydrocarbonates? Yeah. And uh, I would give them this in the form of sugar honey solution in water or something like that. And they'll take as much as they want. But uh, trust me, they won't take a lot of it. All right. So um, I would say this species is not for a first timer but it is in fact suited for a beginner so if you have had a little bit of experience with ants and you you think you can deal with these ants in the ant species uh, go ahead and find yourself a colony or a queen because they're great now 
some of you who saw my last video may be thinking why I'm uploading this, an ant care species guide today, not a video on my gecko. That's actually because, well, well, I was working on the video for the gecko and I was also finishing up my, my test period, which is now done for, I think, about a month. And then I'll start again. So now I have time to make a lot of videos. And as I was working on the gecko video project, which I haven't done a lot of, I must admit, I found and bought a colony of Mami Carubra. So I decided I'll do a video on them because I've counted before. I know what I'm, I know what I'm talking about. And um, when I have them, I can start posting stuff about them and people will know how to keep that species and I don't have to go over it um, in update videos or something like that. I wanted to, to get this done. Now, why do I want to do update videos on them? It's because I bought the colony with about 50 workers to start off and two queens. So I, I thought I needed a big colony to start giving some content. And I, I think that with 50 workers and two queens, in a very short while, we'll have a, a video worthy ant that will give us content more often for, for me to, to post to you. So it's a great species. Go ahead, have yourself um, some of them. Keep them. They're great. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.